I am delighted to introduce Ed Bishop, Tessian CTO, co-founder, and incidentally, my neighbor tuning in from down the street. Ed will be kicking us off with our first keynote, why human layer security is needed in today's world. Over to you, Ed. Thanks, Kelly, and hello, everyone. While I wish we were able to meet today in person, there are some benefits to this being a virtual event. More people from more countries are able to join, and unlike me, some of you may be sitting comfortably in your pajamas. That's all, there's always a bright side. Anyway, my name is Ed Bishop. I'm the Chief Technology Officer and co-founder of Tessian. If you've been following Tessian, you're probably familiar with human layer security and what this new paradigm means for our industry. If you're new to Tessian, welcome and thank you for joining the summit. Either way, we're all here together for the same reason, to learn something new. We've all heard probably more times than we'd like to admit that these are unprecedented times. Every brand that we've ever given our email address, address to has reminded us of this at least once. While the phrase has been overused, it is, like it or not, the truth. COVID-19 has forced most businesses to adopt remote or hybrid working structures seemingly overnight, and IT security and compliance leaders and their employees are up against new challenges. The perimeter has disappeared. One office has turned into thousands. We've seen a rise in email use and consequently a rise in phishing scams and data loss over email. This means that previously effective cybersecurity strategies have become obsolete overnight. This isn't a temporary change or a fleeting experiment in the way that we work. Yes, in time, life will start to resemble the way it was before. But for many businesses, this has ushered in lasting change. The most successful businesses in the future will have adopted hybrid structures that accommodate employees working from home in satellite offices or local offices, and of course, back in HQ. And it will be a win-win for businesses as it enables a more diverse, productive, and fulfilled workforce. While throughout this summit, we'll be looking towards the future, I'd like to take some time to really set the stage. Where are we right now? While we've seen a spike in cyber threats over the, in the last few months, it will probably come as no shock to anybody that, that the, the volume of cyber attacks and data breaches have been steadily increasing over the last several years. And why is this? At the heart of incidents and breaches is human error. In fact, according to Verizon's 2020 data breach investigations report, errors are now more common than malware and are truly ubiquitous across all industries. What many of us don't know though, is why things are trending like this. It's not like we haven't been trying to keep our organizations secure. In fact, one of our in fact, every single one of our organizations will have a cybersecurity strategy for how we protect ourselves against these inbound and outbound risks. The problem is that our definition, way of thinking, and strategy for cybersecurity is out of date. The textbook definition of cybersecurity leads with the protection of networks, devices, and data. And that's exactly what we've been doing, focusing on machines and systems but not our people. Today, it's our employees that control our most sensitive systems and data. Julia in HR controls data like employee social security numbers and compensation systems like our H HR and payroll platforms. John in finance controls data like company financial accounts and banking systems like our billing platforms. Why am I telling you this? Because our organizations are only as secure as the people in it. They are the gatekeepers to these digital systems and data. Does that mean that we should blame our employees for every incident or breach we've ever experienced? Absolutely not. It means we should focus our more attention on this human layer. The human layer is what keeps our business running. But what's the proverbial phrase? To err is human. And when we're talking about people, there are three significant security vulnerabilities. Number one, people break the rules. They ignore security policies, they steal company data, and they don't change passwords. Number two, people make mistakes. They accidentally leak data or accidentally misconfigure systems. And number three, people are hacked. They can easily be tricked and coerced by attackers, especially on email. Let's take a closer look at these vulnerabilities. People break the rules. 
They always have, and they always will. But what does breaking the rules mean in the context of email security? It could be someone stealing customer data to sell for financial gain. It could be someone forwarding on trade secrets for a competitive edge. Whatever the method or motive, exfiltrating data via email takes only a few clicks of a mouse, and it happens more than you think. Imagine you're an employee, you're young and motivated. While you've moved up through the ranks quite quickly at your current company, you're looking for the next big thing. You need to update your resume and portfolio. You want to hold on to some of the projects that you've worked so hard on. You have no intention of selling the data or client data, the company or client data, but you want to keep what's yours. So what do you do? Over the course of several weeks, you email spreadsheets, presentations, contracts, and templates back to your personal email address. Harmless, right? Not quite. Those spreadsheets contain sensitive company information. Those contracts have PII of customers and clients. Those presentations con contain financial projections. But this isn't a data loss incident. It's a data breach. But this is just one example. Many data exfiltration incidents aren't even malicious. More often than not, employees are just trying to do their job. For example, emailing company data to your personal email account to work over the weekend, or printing documents while working at home. While these don't sound like data exfiltration attempts, the implications are the same. Sensitive data has left the company's perimeter. It's still a breach. And this is just one of three human layer vulnerabilities. Let's move on to the next. People make mistakes. As we know, and I already mentioned, to err is human. But why? To start with, because we're not perfect and that's okay. But beyond that, I can offer some insights around why people make mistakes on email. We've even done some research into the psychology of human error. And what did it reveal? It revealed that we're always on, go, go, go. We're encouraged to work fast across several devices, from our laptops to our phones, to even our watches. We're distracted, especially when working from home. And because of this fast pace, a lot of us are tired. Some of us are even burnt out. So imagine it's 8.30 PM on a Thursday. You have a long, you've had a long week, but you have to finish preparing some documents for a client. You've made a few last minute changes and you just need to draft the email. Your kids need to be tucked in for bed. You haven't even had chance to eat dinner yet. You attach the files, write a quick note in the body and type the first letter of the client's name, J. The email, ad the email address automatically populates and you click send. The problem is the email address was incorrect. Now, Jamie Douglas, a lawyer you've worked with before, has 15 pages of briefing documents for your new client that was intended for your new client, Jamie Dowd. Again, this is just one example. People are easily hacked. This quick to click culture we live in also influences the last human layer vulnerability that we're going to cover today. While yes, many of us are attuned to what, is a, less, what a less sophisticated scam looks like, and probably wouldn't fall for an email from Bill Gates, which offers to share his fortune. Those scams called phishing attacks are revol but these, these scams called phishing attacks are revolving and the stakes are higher than ever. Worse still, hackers tend to take advantage of key calendar moments and times of uncertainty or un unrest. That's why we saw a spike in phishing attacks immediately after the outbreak of COVID and why we've seen a surge in census scams, stimulus check scams, and US election scams over the last few months. Imagine you've been eagerly awaiting your stimulus check. Suddenly you get an email from someone that appears to work in your company's HR department. The email asks you to follow a link and answer a few questions, your name, your date of birth, your address, and some financial information. It promises that once you've entered all of the above, you'll find out how much of money you're entitled to. And within a few days, it'll be transferred over. What do you do? Well, you probably fill in the information. In a week's time, you still haven't received a check. Meanwhile, a hacker sold your data on the dark web. As many of you probably remember, in the 90s, it was about protecting the network, and now we have firewalls. Last decade, it was about protecting devices, and now we have EDR platforms. But now what do we have to protect people? After all, people are an organization's most valuable asset. What options do we have to secure our employees? 
Some of the most common approaches are removal of access to systems, policies, training, and rule-based technologies. If we were in a theater or auditorium, I'd ask you to raise your hands if these are some, some of the approaches you rely on. I don't want to assume, but I'd imagine almost everyone in attendance would have their hands up. While all of these have a place in cybersecurity strategies, they alone aren't enough to prevent human error. But over the last seven years, Tessian has been working on machine intelligence solutions specifically built to help protect our people. We've trained machine learning models on historical email data sets to learn and map out normal human relationships and behaviors in order to detect abnormalities and human error. Now, to answer the big question, what's in it for you? When you add machine intelligent technologies to your security stack, you actually have a chance to preempt incidents and empower people to make better security decisions. We call this new paradigm human layer security. Human layer security works in the background, monitoring every single email sent and received within your organization. And it turns your email data into valuable signals and insights. Remember the employee who was quietly exfiltrating data as he searched for a new job? Tessian would have flagged this behavior as suspicious, warning the user and reinforcing training, training and awareness policies. Tessian would also alert the security teams of the behavior, giving them full visibility of the incidents within their organization. Remember the employee who fired off an email to the wrong person late at night? Tessian would have noticed the recipient was incorrect. And after showing the employee the reasons why the email was flagged, would have asked, would you still like to send this email? Which prevents emails from ever ending up in the wrong inbox. And finally, remember the employee who fell for the stimulus check scam? Tessian would have analyzed the content of the email, including the sender and the links contained within the body. A warning message would appear, educating the user on why the email is suspicious, suspicious asking the employee if they'd like to report the near miss. Tessian helps employees make smart security decisions so that they can focus on what they, what they do best. As the Chief Technology Officer of Tessian, I'm passionate about what happens behind the scenes of our human layer security platform. I'm both proud and confident in our technology, but what's more important than the tech behind Tessian is the impact of the technology. It started with preventing human error on email, but now it's so much more than that. We give security, IT, and compliance leaders genuine visibility into the risks within their organization. We're turning billions of data points into predictive trends. We're turning risky users into empowered security conscious employees. We're turning data exfiltration attempts into insights around employee satisfaction. And we're turning email attacks into actionable intelligence to consistently downtrend risk. In fewer words, we, are proactively, we proactively prevent inbound and outbound email threats. Now that we've set the stage and you've all gotten an introduction to human layer security, Let's, let's kick off the main event. But don't forget, you can submit questions to be answered live throughout the event by clicking on the question mark button you should see in the bottom left-hand side. Thank you for joining us today. Let's get started.